okay? Yeah. To he that much is given, much is required. Now, is, isn't it also true, getting back to what we said before, that Osama bin Laden was a, is, was a, is a former CIA agent? Mujahideen. They worked with the CIA with the Russians in Afghanistan. How do you think they came to be? Who right. got their weapons? The CIA gave them to them. And it's, and it's also strange that a body was never produced. A body was never produced. Supposedly it's in the ocean. It, I don't believe it. Even for the family? You, you know, for I the, don't believe it. I don't uh, believe it. You know, and did something happen to SEAL Team 6? I've been reading that on Yes, on, the other online. day they couldn't complete their mission. They say because there would have been a lot of collateral damage. Who knows what the real reason? Was. Not not with the compound that uh, then Bin Laden was living in. No, no, this is another thing. Another. The other day. Oh, okay. <clears throat> another day. Okay. All right. I'm not sure where it was. So Maybe before, it was Somalia. All right. Let me let me get this out of the way because I'm gonna I will induct. Um, induct. No, the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Oh. I'm going to induct McDonald's. Uh, oh, it, well, of course, McDonald's is always. Induct in inducted in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Right. You know, like many others that deserve to be there. Monsanto. Yeah. Walmart. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It goes on and on and on the list. But anyway, I have to use the shillelagh because I have to emphasize when I induct somebody. McDonald's, shame on you. You are hereby inducted again, uh, again, into this week's Chisler's Hall of Shame. And uh, it's a personal experience I had. Um, sometimes, because Billy lives, Billy William H. Moore of the Third lives extremely close to uh, a McDonald's in in uh, northeastern New Jersey. Um, not right next to it, but close, walking distance. And he didn't feel like driving, so sometimes I meet him for coffee or you know uh, I, I would have a strawberry milkshake he would have his coffee because I have coffee at home you know and green tea <clears throat> so I meet him there and uh, he gives me uh, I get my milkshake and I get a uh, receipt with coupon in the back uh, buy one McDonald's wrap and the other one says buy one of the new and improved quarter pounder hamburgers and get one free Ooh. so I go oh really let's see what do we got here you can get one with uh, bacon and cheese and the other one with uh, uh, bacon with ranch sauce and uh, habanero peppers oh boy yeah but there's hardly any habanero I know how I used to grow habaneros and there's hardly any habaneros in there. Mm. so anyway I take one of each because, you know, I'm always hungry, so I just, uh, just to try it. One of each, and the, the cashier asked me for the money. And this is where, this is what shocked me, and this is why I'm saying shame on you, McDonald's. Oh, it was buy one, get one free, all right. But you know how much one, one lousy quarter pounder hamburger was? It's over five dollars. Get out of here! That's where you pay for two. They jack. They 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 use the same old retail scam. The it's it's one of the oldest retail tricks. When they put something on sale, it could be clothing, whatever. As soon as they put something on sale or offer a buy one get one free, they always jack up the regular retail selling price of the item. It's an old retail trick in America. It's 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 unregulated, legalized snake oil salesmanship mm. scamming, and I was really pissed. Mm. So you're not really, in a sense, getting buy one get one free. And of course, you know, I had a big, uh, ferocious uh, disagreement about it with Billy Morrow because he he still believes that corporations are the job creators in the United States mm -hmm. and he's saying, he kept on saying, well so what? The important thing is how do you like it? I go, that's not the issue. It's alright. 
it tastes all right but that's not the issue the point is the sale is bogus buy one get one free but one quarter pounder is over five dollars did you happen to look on the menu the, to see he, what it is normally no because but, you're paying 250 a piece for those I t Billy insists that the quarter pounder was always that much. How could that be if a Whopper is not even that much yeah. at Burger King? Yeah. How could a quarter pounder, which is not a large hamburger, how could no. that be five dollars and cost and cost more than a Whopper, which is a yeah. much larger hamburger? Exactly, crap, crap. So he was covering up because you know he still thinks uh, corporate is the yeah. is the backbone of America. Blah 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 blah. They provide this. Well, what they did provide we do before corporate? I said, Billy, they don't provide it. They outsource jobs. What did we do before corporations? We had our own land, our own family-owned farms. Ah! We produced our own food. Freedom, and we, liberty. Freedom and liberty, right? And justice for all. And justice for all. So, you know, because his, you know, bless his heart, but because his dad was uh, was a big executive with IBM, he still thinks that corporate is just peachy keen. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It's far from it. So, uh, they're not the job creators. Then when I tell him, he goes, oh, oh, yeah, right, right. But he still doesn't want to let go mm -hmm. of the virtues of the corporation. Is it one of their virtues, virtues to own the U.S. government, to be married to it, and enslave the little the little Fascism? guy, and enslave the little guy? Is that one of their virtues? Because that's what we have today. Oh, okay. absolutely, absolutely. I think they're demonic. There's there's very few things that I really hate, and one of them is a corporate CEO. You know what they did in the old days? When a corporation did something, see corporations uh, number one are supposed to be doing things in the public interest. That's part of the charter. Ah, uh, sure. They dismiss that today. It's not worth the paper it's written on. But it, that's how corporations began. They were supposed to be doing things in the public interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the old days, if the corporation did not, you revoked the charter. I'd like to see anybody try to revoke a charter today. It's easy. You just revoke it, and if they don't like it, you say, screw you. Yeah, well, it ain't going to be done. Because because the, palms uh -huh. are, because the palms are getting greased? Absolutely. Bribery. Don't forget to call it what it is. Bribery. Uh, bribery. Uh, uh, political campaign contributions. Uh, bribery. Lobbyists. Uh, 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 bugging politicians to do this and that. Bribery. Not bugging them. And my God, it's all organized with Alec. <coughs> the American Legislative <coughs> Exchange Council. They write the laws for Listen. the uh, 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 politician, the legislature. You know, you know why I blame the corporate CEOs more than I blame the politicians, even though they're both guilty. Because in order to have uh, somebody offer the bribe, you have you need somebody to take the bribe. Mm -hmm. But you know why I blame the CEO? It takes two to tango. It takes two to do the tango, right? To dance the tango. You know why I blame the CEO more? Because the CEOs know that if the if the 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 amount of money offered is high enough, that they will always be able to buy a human being. If they if they raise the the ante, if they raise the, the everybody has a price yeah. for the million dollar man. Yeah. So if you go high enough, they know Someone's that these uh, many of these politicians are going to bite and they don't and even take have it. to go high. They're they whores any cheap. So they're whores. Yeah. They're cheap whores. So you know people like conservative. Uh, uh, demons with two legs, uh, like uh, Mitch Turtleface, Mitch McConnell, Rand Paul, uh, Paul uh, Ryan. Crybaby, uh, huh? Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, Mr. Food Stamp Cutter. Okay. Mr. Food Stamp Cutter, that that has gotten so. He's been living. He's gotten millions in contributions to on government lucre for all of his life. 
Yeah, but I, I was reading that he got paid off so many times from so many different but that's, well, yeah, industries. Yeah, but the point is, uh, why didn't he do things to, uh, you know, up by the bootstrap? No, he's a, well, he's a, he's a, he's a multi-millionaire many times over. Yeah, but off governments, off the door. Right. But, but, We've been paying him. But if uh, a middle class or low income human being wants some food stamps, which is really a few, it's really chicken feed when you think about it, because they don't give you that much. That's great. That's a big problem to this, this Republican. He's, a fil he's filthy rich, but that's a big problem. That's great. When some poor schmuck needs a yeah. few crumbs. Those pelicans over there, you see? Oh, like my aunt said, see those pelicans that come every day? They're looking for handouts. This was in the Florida Keys. This was this was on Long Key, Florida, on the Gulf of Mexico side, and the pelicans were coming uh, because they were looking for food. And you know, but she said, you know, see those pelicans that come every day? They're they're looking for handouts. And then, yeah, and, and and if you give them handouts, you're making them dependent. And she's Republican. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Making them dependent. Of course. But it's okay for the fat cats to, to be dependent. To take welfare for the rich in the form of bailouts. And doles. What do you think it is when you pay a congressman or a senator? That's a dole. They're on the dole. Yeah, not dole okay. pineapple. We're talking about on the dole is somebody who takes a handout, right? From the government. From the government. Correct. Well, they do it. That's correct. <clears throat> And like right now in the shutdown, guess whose salaries were not shut out? The congressman. There you go. Because they need their paychecks. That's what she said, that well, one woman. Like Congresswoman Elmers of, ah. uh, of um, yeah. North, Car North Carolina, I think. Yeah. Ah. Damn. North Carolina. Congresswoman Elmers of North Carolina says, well, we need our paychecks and that's the bottom line. And in and, and saying that, what did she say? She said that we are elites. You are not. So Does anybody recognize this? So When they tell you this, this is the same what they've been telling for years and years and so, years about killing the government, destroying the government, so making it smaller. So even though, even though these so-called elitists, uh, even though they will take absolutely nothing with them when they die mm. they still think they're better than other people even though they came into this world with with nothing but their birthday suit Bare -assed. but their birthday suit and they will leave this earth with nothing but well you see what the pharaohs whatever the did. funeral parlor puts on them the pharaohs thought they could take it with them <laughs> you know oh yeah, yeah. oh Oh yeah, they used to kill their pets and mummify them and... And their servants! Mm, poor, yeah. ser poor servants. Yeah, poor servants, my God. Anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Because I got here a little earlier for this exact reason. I wanted to complete my thought here. As I said, for complete. years and years and years, the Republicans have been telling us what they want to do with government. Oh. They want to destroy it. They want to make it small enough to drown in a bathtub. Now all of a sudden, when we got shut down and government's being destroyed and people are saying, what? What's happening? Learn to listen to them. They tell you what they want to do. The United Nations Security Council is expressing alarm at the imminent threat of the spread of polio through Sudan's violence rack South Kartofan and Blue Nile states and continuing the outbreak of polio in the Horn of Africa. The UN Humanitarian Office has reported that the threat affects more than 165,000 children oh. in the two Sudanese states due to a lack of immunization in border area and in more than two years, the Security Council said in a statement on Friday. Well, 
I would say it's not due to immun lack of immunization. It's the, due to a lack of hygiene. Maybe. Yeah, eh? like uh, well, they have all all the um, good food. The immune uh, systems. Call they have cholera. Uh, uh, the, the dysentery. Dysentery. Truth. Dysentery. Uh, uh, e even even. Um, Leprosy in some some areas, right? It still exists. Absolutely. You know what? What is the dysentery? Is that the? Is that from, uh, from stagnant water. stagnant water, or, or is that cholera? Bo both, I think. From stagnant from water, there. filthy yeah. water. But filth in general. Yeah, I mean, if you drink water from a river, I don't. I I, I don't. There think, people have shit in it. I don't think it applies to. To animals, but if humans do it, and, and you ingest an amoeba, Ooh. it goes right to your brain. Put puts bores holes in your brain. Ooh. Thank you, amoeba. Yeah. <laughs> no sports team ever named their team after an amoeba or a paramecium, even as, or any any microbes. Yeah. Not even a mosquito. On a lighter note. Penguins live only in the southern hemisphere. True. Would they thrive if they were introduced to the northern hemisphere? Penguins, uh, even the tropical penguins, still live south of the equator. No. They won't survive in the northern hemisphere. The yeah, subject? Because the polar bears would eat them. The subject is being discussed more often because global warming is threatening penguin environments. However, moving a colony to another location would cause its members far more problems than they might possibly escape. They have, they have very few natural enemies in Antarctica. As far as, far as the the polar penguins go. They they were except that uh, was it leopard seals? Did you see the uh, picture the other day of the the great white who was trying to eat a seal, and the seal jumped up on its nose, on the shark's nose, <laughs> and when the shark came out of the water, like the seal, here. the seal jumped off his nose and ran the hell away. <laughs> well. Great white sharks. Able to swim another day. Even though great white sharks are fish, they have enough intelligence to to come up from underneath the seal and just come up yeah, and well, attack it from the one. bottom. Yeah. He missed this so one. they can't be all that stupid. Fish. Penguin species live in varied climates, but all are sensitive to changes in air and ocean temperature both with respect to their everyday health and the availability of the kind of food they need. Also, when their habitats are changed, they often decline to mate. Hmm. The biological circumstances of penguins are just as limiting. They are birds, but they are flightless and ungainly on land. Well, they're flightless because they, they're expert swimmers. They have flippers. Oh, here we go. I think we're going to have to... Where? Is that the same one? I'm not sure if that's uh, the one up there. Maybe somebody's walking If it doesn't by. stop, I'm just going to close the... batten down the hatches. Uh, they're on gaily on land where they must rest. I mean, nest. You know what? Let me shut it. Oh. No, it's okay. Yeah, but no, it's Bogman. Shut up! That'll make it more. Haven't you learned that yet? What about a good punch right on a schnoz? Or a whack with my shillelagh? And their young are vulnerable to predation. 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 In the Antarctic regions, penguin environments have few or no predators. That's what I said before. But the Arctic has bears, wolves, foxes, and more. Regardless, human encroachment on penguin environments began 
long before global warming was even suspected. And various groups have already tried to introduce the beloved birds to new territories. All the experiments have ended in dismal failure. Okay? Fucking jackasses. Unfortunately. I like to punch out the owner of the dog too. Unfortunately, I he really has would. never trained the dog. Better put the fanny pupae on medium. Alright, which button is this? Two. Right there. Mm. I hope my stuff doesn't blow away. Yeah. Well, Bill, plus Billy Jr. here would, it shows up. There's no glare on Billy Jr. After quoting the House Speaker's comments, Unconditional surrender, the record said, which is our newspaper, that rhetoric is unhelpful, although it certainly appeals to the party's conservative wing. In an environment where people, often Democrats, are referring to the opposing party as hostage takers, and economic terrorists, that you would highlight John Boehner's comment alone is asinine. The truth is this. It takes two sides to compromise. It takes two sides to work together. Uh, I think this gentleman is forgetting one very important thing. What's that, sir? This shutdown has nothing to do with compromise. There was no compromise that was going to occur. The shutdown was over trying to defund a law called Obamacare. Sabotage. It's not That's not correct. Sabotage. So not why now do we need two sides to compromise on sabotage. Exactly. Thank you. Unfortunately, both parties, including President Obama, have demonstrated that they are more interested in winning the political battle of demonizing their opponents than actually doing their jobs. The two parties weren't cooperating before this current problem. How could anyone rationally believe that they will cooperate later? Rather than participating in these silly Washington games and picking a side to blame, the record should tell the story. Washington is broken! And both parties are to blame. I beg to differ. There's one party that has much more blame than the Democrats. The ones that take the big bribes. And that is the conservatives. The conservative bribe takers. Which which me which which equals corruption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <coughs> Now this one refers to a letter uh, that someone wrote about uh, the House GOP. Mm -hmm. The letter writer makes some amazing claims. Does he really believe that Obamacare is the most intrusive and destructive piece of legislation in the history of our nation? Hell no. I fear that Fox News and radio talk shows are contributing to the ignorance of our nation. Bingo! I don't know. I don't understand how the people of Fox News can actually believe that they're 
way of thinking and, and their policies would actually revive the, uh, the United States and stimulate the economies beyond me. Maybe they don't believe that. You know, who's, I mean, who's going to buy their, their, their products that their corporations are making? I don't know. So when people believe in an ideology, <clears throat> especially an unproven ideology, They'll stand by that ology and they'll call it their principles and they're their convictions. They're idiots. But they are wrong. You know, uh, it, 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 when people are deceived, they don't know that they are deceived. But how come people like uh, you and I and uh, Jesse Ventura and Gary know, how come we're not deceived? Perhaps we're not as lazy as they are. They have ready-made answers to the problems of life. They don't have to think about them. They don't have to study them. They don't have to do homework. They don't have to do any of that stuff. They have ready-made answers. It's just like what me and, and Billy Morrow were talking about. The, the, uh, be, being a, a, a free, independent thinker with an open mind. Open mind! An independent, free thinker with an open mind. That's all you need. You don't need a high IQ. Question everything. Just like... Uh, yeah. The but late, great George Carlin says, you don't, don't have believe an anybody, question you everything. You don't have an open mind if you are believing in an ideology. Okay? But there's the something that. There's something deficient in those minds. Your ideology answers all questions. But there has to be something, there has to be some mental deficiency in that type of mind not to have an independent, free-thinking mind. There is some studies that do show that conservatives have a mental disorder. Okay? Yeah. That's quite obvious. Because yeah. an intellectual individual, uh, a truly intellectual person, is most likely to be a progressive person. Remember what George W. Bush said about intelligence. In, about his what? His intelligence was his gut. Okay? And, and, and his gut wasn't we're, we're not messages from God, that's for sure. <laughs> Whatever. I have heard this on many shows and wonder if these people are aware of Jim Crow laws or the Fugitive Slave Act, which allowed slave catchers to hunt down slaves and return them. The alleged slaves had no rights and could not testify or argue on their own behalf. And the writer also believes that a law passing in both houses of Congress by thin margins somehow makes institution for all the people who talk about the greatness of that document few of them are willing to live by it when it does not suit their needs the patient protection and affordable care act was passed it was upheld by the supreme court if people want to change certain aspects of the law, they should try to pass those changes through Congress. The president should not negotiate, should not compromise mm -hmm. changes to the law because the GOP refuses to fund the government. Altering existing legislation is a separate function and should go through the normal legislative process. The fact that the House has voted more than 40 times to repeal the law tells you all you need to know about the GOP agenda. If they wanted to fix problems that they had with the law, they could vote for that. Instead, they want a scorched earth policy that only hurts President Obama and the millions of people this law helps. Now, 40, I think it was 42 times. 42 times voting to defund Obamacare, but not one, not one time to vote to put Glass-Steagall back. No, you're right about it, you're right. Well, I want to say one last thing before uh, we take a break um, for this week's Progressive Discussions.
Uh, it has to do with Columbus Day. I noticed that uh, people are posting banners online concerning Columbus Day, blaming Columbus for the demise of the uh, indigenous uh, Native American people, the torture, the genocide, so on and so forth, stealing everything from them. Yes, it's true. If Columbus did not discover, uh, well, after the Vikings discovered the, the northern part of the, of the New World, you know, the Caribbean, America, if you want to say, if Columbus did not discover America, you wouldn't have the the genocide of the Indians and the slave trade. But remember, I believe it was the Spaniards, conquistadors, the Span Spaniards that tortured and stole and, and committed genocide towards the Native American indigenous people and not Columbus. He was just a guy that was lost looking for a shortcut to India. That's and I all. believe he landed in the Caribbean. He, he, right, first they, trip. I don't know if he came his second trip to America itself. Oh, and, and, I don't know. And everything and he did, that. everything he did um, for the Spaniards. Uh, I mean, he was thrown in prison uh, ultimately. I mean, that, that that's the thanks he got. He, he eventually was thrown in prison, and of course, the uh, Queen Isabella of Portugal put up the, uh, the ships. Yeah. Nina and the, the Pinto. Nina, the Pinto, and the Santa Maria. The Pinto, yeah. yeah. Not the... Yeah. Uh, not, not Pinto. The, You're thinking of Pinto beans. Pinto, I think. No, I was pinto. thinking the Pinto is a... Uh, pinto. Isn't Pinto a slang uh, expression for the uh, male genitalia? No, that's uh, Pena. No, that's pineapple. Uh, pineapple? Uh, no, that's... Uh, Pain. Uh, um, what the hell? Somebody used to say something. Pena? Pen Whatever. Well, yeah, whatever, whatever. I know uh, the, the, the churches is if the female and the male is uh, uh, something like that. Oh, I know. But anyway, anyway, uh, Columbus did not physically uh, kill Indians and uh, steal anything from them. The conquistadors. The conquistadors did it, you know. Cortez and Pizarro and, and the whole with the Catholic Church with in league with the Roman Catholic Church they had a representative of the Catholic Church with them as they did because they were spreading the faith no they were stealing the gold <laughs> the Pope uh, probably heard that there were there were a lot of gold in them thar hills yeah. so anyway we'll be back with William H Morrow the third our voiceover artist and a screenplay a writer what was that a song by the Beatles paperback writer paperback writer dun.